because I know how much, much most of you guys love Am Angular. Um, I decided to take a deep dive into Angular dependency injection. Uh, in case you didn't know, this is me, John Rauschenberg. So uh, let's take a look at what's going on under the hood. It's a little more complicated than it might seem uh, when you're simply uh, specifying something to inject into a given Angular component. So uh, as I said, um, injection can look really simple, um, but there are a lot of ins, a lot of outs, and a lot of what have yous. There's a lot going on under the hood, and understanding it better can actually help you inject better. So I'm going to cover kind of three things in this presentation. Uh, like I said, how injections actually work. Um, they're kind of mysterious, but it's actually uh, relatively simple uh, what Angular is doing, which doesn't mean that it's not a little bit expensive. Um, how, how the best way to inject is, which uh, once you understand how injections work, uh, you'll, you'll kind of naturally come to figuring out the best way to use injection. And then I'll just kind of end up with just a general uh, rundown of a few of the benefits of injection in general as a design pattern. So let's just start with uh, you know, a JavaScript vanilla function that takes parameters. We've all seen something like this. Um, the parameter names don't matter, as you know. It could just as easily be you know, anything we, the variables could, or the parameters could be anything we want them to be. It doesn't change the way the function works. Um, that all changes with Angular, which uses dependency injection. It does start mattering. So here's uh, Angular controller. Um, as you can see, we're calling uh, three injections, scope, order, and state. And the parameter names do matter. If you mess them up, it will break your controller because the parameters actually are calling the function. It's not the other way around. So. Uh, how does that work? How does JavaScript get kind of turned on its head in this case? This is, uh, this is called implicit dependency injection um, because we're not explicitly, uh, as you can see, it looks like any other function. We're not explicitly injecting anything. What is actually going on? Because it's not obvious. Um, if you guys guessed that there's some two stringing going on here, you're right. Um, Angular is taking that function, turning it into a string, applying four different regexes to it, and then iterating over an array of providers to find what providers you're actually injecting into your controller. There are a couple problems with this process which you might be able to guess. Um, I can, I can uh, enlighten you with this slide. <laughs> um, first problem, expensive as crap. Um, two string, calling regexes four times, and array iteration are not cheap. Um, second problem is minification. If your code, if and when your code is minified, uh, one of the things the minification will do is try to shorten all your parameter names to save space. When that happens, uh, your parameter names in your, what it thinks are parameter names in your controller are getting minified and they suddenly lose any connection to the services or providers they're mentioning the entire lookup process is broken. So that's a nice kind of quick way to inject, but there might be a better way. Use protection. You can use things like ng-annotate. That will make sure that, your, that uh, your implicit dependency injection becomes explicit before minification. So it'll automatically annotate those dependency injections, prevent them from being minified. Um, you can use it together with ng-strict, which is kind of a, a version of uh, using strict mode in JavaScript, which will prevent you from using implicit dependency injection um, altogether. But uh, it seems like a lot of work to avoid something that you maybe shouldn't be doing anyway. And it doesn't at all uh, fix the speed problem as far as the expensive and slow process with implicit uh, injection. So solution two, just set the freaking thing yourself. You can explicitly tell uh, Angular to inject uh, these, uh, these providers into your controller or component. Um, that solves the problem uh, of, of uh, minification. Um, you may be able to guess why, but um, I will tell you. It's uh, because uh, strings will not get minified, because strings are primitives. 
we do not minify primitives. Um, so minification will not touch those strings. They will not be minified. And also, it looks pretty clear when you're coding it. So that's kind of nice. Um, everyone knows that those are, those are explicitly being injected. Um, and no one is going to confuse them for normal parameters. Um, disadvantages, it was nice. When we were doing it all at once, it looked kind of nice. We didn't have to do a separate inject line. So can we have it both ways at once? Let's see. Get the array on. This is something that's actually kind of cool. I did not know before uh, preparing this talk. But you can combine everything into one. Normally, you'd be putting a function declaration after naming your controller here. But instead, if you put an array, Angular says, OK, everything before the last item in the array is something that, that you want to inject into this component. And the last item is the actual function that you're going to run. Um, it knows, it, it, uh, knows to explicitly inject those. Basically, the same thing is going on under the hood here as in the last slide when we were using inject explicitly. So it knows to explicitly inject those. It doesn't have to do a lookup. It doesn't have to stringify. It doesn't have to do any other work under the hood. And then it, it, so it quickly injects those, then runs your function all is well. The final verdict with this, um, it's all in one place. It saves all the work. It's clear. Because we are still using strings, minification isn't going to mess with this. Um, disadvantages. Uh, one thing you may have noticed, in the, uh, in the array, we have to name everything in the same order as it's being called in the function. Otherwise, Angular will be very confused. And you don't want to go there. So that is maybe the one disadvantage. But other than that, it's a pretty nice way to uh, work with Angular components. But finally, why inject in the first place? Why are we even doing this? Well, um, as you know, modularity is key in programming. Um, and it allows kind of a loose coupling between the things you're injecting and the uh, components that they're being injected to. You can have things you inject multiple places. You don't have to redefine them every time or reuse them. So it kind of uh, encourages modular programming. Finally, uh, when we get to testing, um, it makes your code much, much easier to test because you can kind of fake inject things. Um, it's much easier than if you have everything integrated and you're having to create huge integrated uh, fake things to test. Um, it's, it's better to separate things and then be able to unit test each thing. The, the thing being injected, the function that's using the injected thing. So that's kind of injection in a nutshell, uh, dependency injection in Angular. Um, here are some resources. I especially recommend the first one, which is a really great look at Angular under the hood. But if you want to know if you're like into abstract uh, concepts like me in programming, um, you can look at the Wikipedia uh, entry on inversion of control, which is really cool. Um, and that'll give you the general idea of what uh, injection is doing. Um, that's my presentation. <laughs>